Shalom, I'd like to say Baruch Fah, Yahweh, B'Shem Eshai, double honors to apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Baruch Fah, Yahweh, B'Shem Yahashai, B'Shem, Rukal Kadash, and blessings and salutations to the elect worldwide, preaching the, the gospel in spirit and truth, and consistency, consistency throughout the four corners of the earth, and may the Lord have mercy and bless the, the one third, the remnant, men, women, and children. Are destined to repent <clears throat> and you so-called negroes latinos native americans and hispanics you guys are the true israelites of the bible man and your god is the god of israel and the father's name is yahweh and the son's name is not jesus christ but yahweh shai which is a so-called black man according to the scriptures yeah going back to the basics once again this is a very popular scripture in fact the most popular scripture uh, throughout the Bible, according to Christians, you know, they love the scripture. This is their go to scripture. If they, they've memorized it to a T, they love this scripture. You know, this is what they use to convert people into Christianity. Well, really and truly, you can't come, really and truly, there's no Christianity according to the Bible. And you, and this Bible, this book is a book to the Israelites, which is a nation of people, which you cannot um, conform to a nationality or convert to a nationality. It's impossible. Yeah, you're either born or born it or not. Yeah, read the uh, the prophecies, Luke one sixty eight, salvations to Israel. But anyways, going on to this topic, I'm going to read it for Bam right now. Then I'm going to go into it slowly. So John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yeah? So, a regular Christian reading that and say, look, see God is for everybody. God loves everybody. Really and truly. That's a contra that would be a contradiction, and really it's because the, the the according to the scriptures, the Lord also hates, and He hates a particular race of people. Let me just go to that quickly. This is Romans nine, verse thirteen. As it is written, now if something is written, that means it was in a it was in the past. And it still um, corresponds to this day. It's still factual to this day. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. Jacob is who? The nation of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel, which is used so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Hispanics uh, that have been scattered throughout the earth. No matter how you look like, but you're the descendants, man. Yeah, due to the prophecies of Deut Deuteronomy 28, Genesis 49, and various scriptures that prove our characteristics and and prophecies concerning us jacob have i loved but esau have i hated so wait if the lord now when the, when you hear names like jacob and esau you need to understand according to the scripture when when the, when the lord um makes mention of a name he talks about not not that individual to that one it's not talking about that one person it's talking about the seed, it's talking about that person and the seed of that person. That's what you need to understand. So that's why you hear time after time it might say the house of Jacob. You know, it's talking about the family of Jacob, the descendants of Jacob. You will always say Abraham, Isaac, and, uh, and Jacob. Yeah, showing you a line. Yeah. It, you see, you hear it in the New Testament it say Jacob, but obviously, if you use your brain. J Jacob was nowhere to be seen in the, in the New Testament because that that was that was prior. In other words, he, his time was, you know, his time was done. So what is it referring to when they say when the Lord mentions that name? He's he's referring to the people that came out of that person. So in this case, when it says Jacob, it's talking about the the nation that came out of Jacob, the nation of Israel. So when it's saying Esau, which is the so-called white man today, you can read the scriptures of. Genesis 25 and Genesis 27, Genesis 28, it shows the characteristics of Esau, which is a so-called white man. 
that's another topic. When it mentions the name of Esau, it's not um, talking about that one person only. No, it's talking about that person and his seed, the generation after him, his children after him, his whole race, in other words. So you need to understand that. And it says, have I hated? So wait, how can John 3, 16, which you Christians claim um, to interpret, um, fit in this case? It cannot fit. That will be a contradiction. But really and truly, if you, know, if you know about the scriptures, the scriptures does not contradict. It's just that people put a poor judgment of the scriptures or, shall I say, they um, interpret or interpret wrong or put what they're saying in the wrong context. You know, the scripture is right. It's just that people have twisted, added, removed and don't have understanding. And ultimately, the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, is not dealing with them. The Holy Spirit is not dealing with them, so they don't understand. They're going off. But over here, that will be a contradiction in your terms. But it's not. Because, as I understand, the rest of the prophets understand, the men of the Lord, who we believe are the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and on down, we know, according to the scripture, that the Lord does not love everybody. And that proves it right there. But let's just go back to John 3, 16 and see something. A lot of people miss this. Now, when you read verses above, it gives you an account of what happened in, Mo in Moses' time. And it's referring to, and it makes reference, should I say, in here, in John 3. But let's go, John 3, start from verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, now keep in mind, Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. If you know anything about Mo Moses, his legacy was always with who? The children of what? The children nation of Israel. God the Father, Yahweh, Bashem, Hashai, gave the laws and commandments to Moses to pass on to the nation of Israel. He didn't deal with any other nation. He didn't care about any other nation. In fact, he's the one that brought out the nation of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Slavery. So as Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So he's making a, a reference to um, the Moses' times of, 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 the, of the serpent that was put on a pole. We're going to go into it. And it healed the people that were bitten by the snake, the poisonous snake, which were the people of Israel. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Lifted up. But whosoever believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Oh. You see? But people get trip up when it says whosoever. So first, if they're bringing a reference from Moses' time and they're using words like whosoever, we need to see what was going on in Moses' time and who was there. Who was the, in other words, who was the whosoever in that situation? Who was the whosoever in that environment? Because I can... I can be a teacher in a classroom and say, whosoever misbehaves is going to detention. Now, am I talking to the next classroom next to me? Am I talking to all the classrooms of the world? No, I'm talking to that specific classroom, even though I use the word whosoever. So we need to put context into place. Let's go into it. Um, sorry, Moses. Serpent, it should come up, should be in numbers. Yeah, 21. Let's go into it. Look at this. Verse 5 And people spoke, spoke against God, the Most High. And who was the people? It's going to give you characteristics. And against Moses. Who was with Moses? And who spoke against the, the Most High God? It's going to show you characteristics. Wherefore have ye brought us brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? So these people were saying, So you what? You, you bring us out of Egypt so we can die? Now who was in Egypt? Who was enslaved? Who was in bondage in Egypt? The children of Israel. Okay? To there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loveth the 
the, the light bread. So, you know, the nation of Israel were being wicked because why? They were showing themselves to be faithless or they didn't believe in the power of the Most High Yahweh even though they just witnessed the miracle of the ten plagues and the, the, the split of the sea, the Red Sea, walking on ground while there's water in both sides of you. Do, you. do you know how great of a miracle that is? That's incredible. They witnessed that and still managed to, to be, in other words, niggers and um, unbelievers to the Lord's power. Ungrateful, in other words. And look what look what happened. And the Lord Yahweh, see, this is a God that punishes. The Lord Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people. Which people? The nation of Israel. Fiery serpents, in other words, is saying poisonous snakes. The venom, the fiery, um, referring to the venom. It burns. You know, it's toxic. It's like it's acid, basically. And they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Not everybody. Israel is talking about. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord. That's right. You, you sin by speaking against the Lord. And against thee, pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpent from us. And well, one thing I just wanted to po point out, yeah. When you um, when you show disbelief, in other words, that's you're sinning. You're sinning, man. You um, You have doubt that the Lord can't do anything or can't turn around turn around your problems that's a sin man because the scripture says in hebrews 11 i believe verse 6 it says it is in uh is is it is impossible to please the most high without faith so if you don't have faith you know that's that's kind of it's basically a sin man you don't have faith in his power that's you got to be careful you don't have faith in his power but you have faith uh, in your boss at work that he's going to pay you the next month that's wicked man and, and, and Moses made a, yeah, sorry. And the Lord said to, unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent. And set it upon a pole. And and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten. Now who is everyone referring to? Who, who was the environment? What situation of people did it apply to? The nation of Israel. So now you should be understanding John 3.16. That if a serpent had been, that if a serpent had bitten any man, it's like, I think I'm skipping the gun. Verse 8, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and sit upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. You know, corresponding to John 3.16, eternal life. But this is, uh, like a, in other words, a shadow of things to come. This in particular won't give you eternal life. I'm talking about in that situation, the fiery serpent, but it will restore their health from being um, bitten with a, a, a venomous um, element. But in the scriptures, believing in the Holy Spirit, the scriptures, the doctrine, believing in the name of Yahweh, Shemeshai, and following it, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability and having faith, hey man, if you endure to the end, you. Lord willing, you're the elect and you're guaranteed eternal life. You're going to have first dibs of the kingdom, man. And Moses make a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And it says any man, just like the whosoever. But who is this any man referring to? The nation of Israel. Look, and the children of Israel set forward and pitching Oberth. So it's telling you what people was there. Yeah, so that should help you understand John 3 16 of who's the whosoever, man. Just because you see the word whosoever doesn't necessarily mean everybody in the entire world. Yeah, let's just go into. Um, I'll probably make a part two to this. Yeah, but with that for now, Shalom.